today we are going to speak about hedging and this is a term which many of us have heard many times and sometimes we are not entirely clear what it means. So hedging is used in commodities and before we speak about hedging, I will just give you a brief about risk. So essentially there are two kinds of risk anybody would face in commodities. One is a price risk where the risk of course is that price would change, it does vary, it goes up and down for a variety of factors. And then there is a quantity risk, that the quantity you are producing, for example, that may not actually happen. So, we are going to speak about the price risk here. For the quantity risk, essentially, uh, the best way would be to take an insurance and, you know, we, we have that uh, out of the way in one sense. But how do you hedge price risk, which, which will keep changing and this can affect you whether you are a producer of goods, where if you are producing a good and your fear is that the prices would fall. Or if you are a consumer of goods, then your fear is of course that the prices would go up, the price of raw material would go up and therefore the price of your finished product would go up which would make the, uh, your margins shrink or even uh, theoretically get into a loss. So the price risk which is there, the total risk in the system actually remains the same. So your risk can be transferred to somebody, it cannot actually be reduced. So you need to find a platform and a person who will accept that risk from you. Typically that happens due using financial derivatives. So you have the uh, futures for example are financial derivatives and you can use futures to hedge your risk and transfer that risk to somebody else uh, essentially at a price and it's not a very large price to pay. So how would that happen in practice? So let us take the example of uh, you know, as a consumer, and I'm not talking about an individual consumer. So if there is a company, for example, which is making bread. Now uh, bread is made using wheat. So if you were a consumer or a large user of wheat, you would want to make sure that the wheat which you get, your raw material, is available at an essentially fixed price so that you are able to price your end product. So for example, if you buy bread today at 20 rupees for a loaf of bread, then if the price of wheat goes up, you know, it will be it'll take a long time before you are able to transfer that to the market. Because there are a variety of factors involved there. So what do you do? So let us assume that today the price of wheat, for example, is 1540 rupees a quintal or 15 rupees 40 paise a kg in that sense. So for the sake of rounding off, I'll just take it as 15. So let's say that wheat is currently at rupees 15 per kg. Now you are uh, you are making bread. You want to make sure this is the price which you are going in, and based on this, you have priced your loaf of bread at rupees 20 for one loaf. Okay. So. If the price of wheat goes up, you would naturally need to increase this. You don't want to do that. So what do you do? You go to the futures market and you say, okay, wheat is available at 15 per kg. I am going to buy all the wheat I need, let's say for the next six months, by putting up only a margin, say 10 or 15% of the money. And instead of 15 per kg, I might say that, okay, I am ready to buy it at 15 rupees 25 per kg. So this is essentially the premium you are paying. There is somebody who is going to take that risk from you and say that, okay, I'm going to sell you this wheat at 15.25 per kg, which will give you an assured price over the next six months or eight months, depending on the uh, contracted amount. What that means is, how would that actually help you? So as a consumer of wheat, you would have bought for six months at 15. Let us assume that the price of wheat goes up to 20 rupees a kg. Now when it goes up to 20 per kg, you have one position in the futures market where you have actually bought wheat at 15.25 and then it goes all the way up to 20. At the same time, your wheat in the physical market, for a second, uh, the, the futures prices and the spot prices track each other. In fact, the futures prices track the spot prices. So when this becomes 20, you will find that the spot price has also moved up from approximately 15 earlier to approximately 20 after 6 months. Now when you go to buy wheat in the market, actually you are going to have to buy it at 20 rupees. But in your futures 
market, you've already taken a position at 15.25. So that you, it's like you bought at 15.25 and you will now be able to sell it at 20 because that is the current price. So this difference of approximately 5 comes to you as a profit. And you currently buy the wheat at 20 rupees from the market, but you've already made a 5 rupee profit. So 20 minus 5 rupee profit, your effective price will remain in the range of 15 rupees. This is a classic case of hedging. But this is as far as the consumer is concerned. What happens to a producer? So let's see the same example. We will look at it from a producer's point of view. Now, here of course the problem was that the price would go up. So if the price went down, for example, to 10 rupees a kg, then essentially that money is lost by the, consume, by the consumer or by that guy who's buying wheat in the market because he would lose that advantage, competitive advantage in the market. But that is potential profit. So, you know, that's, that's worse than, uh, you know, it's not as bad as making a loss, right? Now, let's talk about a, a producer. Producer is also producing, a farmer, for example, is producing and he's able to come to this market and he sees the price of wheat at 15 rupees a kg. He has a reverse fear. He's not worried that the price will go to 20. That isn't his benefit. His fear is that this price is going to move to 10. So the price is going to go down. So what does he do? He comes to the same futures market for the amount of produce which he's going to do over the next six months, for example. He can sell on the futures market at 15 rupees a kg. And he could be willing to pay a premium on that, which will be a relatively small premium. Now, when he does that, let us assume for a second that this actually happens, the prices go down. So he is sold at 15. At 15 rupees per kg in wheat. He goes to the market, the price actually falls to 10. Now when he goes to the market after 6 months to sell his produce, he is going to have to sell it at 10 rupees. So he sold it at 10. Theoretically, he would have been better off selling it here, but he's already done that. So he's got 10 here. This 15, also the price in futures as well has fallen to 10. He makes a 5 rupee profit here. So he's got 10 rupees from his wheat sale, he's got a 5 rupee profit, and his total still comes out to 15 rupees, which is the price which he had sold in the futures market. So as you can see, when you sell on the futures market, it can be a very powerful tool for hedging, whether you are a farmer, whether you are an importer, you are an exporter, you are a trader. A large variety of people use this for hedging. And this hedging market actually is what is the foundation, the crux of the entire commodities markets worldwide.